by the end of this video, instead of just our froggy walking around in this game with nothing in his pockets, we're going to be able to press tab or whatever button you want and open up a menu. Wow. We're going to have a couple tabs at the top. You can add as many as you want. It'll work no matter how many you'd like. And when we click on another tab, it'll gray out the others and highlight the one you're on while switching your page. So we got maps, settings, inventories, player. Very cool. And then when we're all done with that, we'll press tab, close it on down and carry on playing. Cool, let's check it out. So first of all, in our hierarchy, I'm going to right click and go UI, Canvas. I'm going to rename this Canvas UI as I'm going to use it to store all of our UI for our game. In our Canvas's settings, we have a Canvas Scaler and I'm going to set UI Scale Mode to be Scale with Screen Size. Then I'm going to set this Reference Resolution to be 920 by 1080 as this is the size I'm targeting in my game. This will work for any screen size. It'll scale, as it says, with the screen size. So even if it's bigger or smaller, it should still work. Next, I'm gonna right click on our UI and go to UI and add a panel. This panel is gonna be for our menu. So I'll rename it menu. Now you can see in our game view, we have this white overlay on our game. That's our panel right now. In the React transform of our panel, I'm gonna set left to be 100. So it pushes it into the side a bit. Right to be 100 top to be 100 and bottom to be 100. So our menu will only appear in this little section in the middle. It's just kind of nice to see the edges of our game. And I'm gonna change the color from white to black. Now, as we saw at the beginning, we're gonna have header boxes at the top and then a main screen at the bottom. So when we click on our tabs, it'll switch between the different pages. So to do this, I'm gonna right click on menu and go create empty and call this tabs. And then right click on menu, create empty and call this pages. So right click on tabs and go UI image as we want an image for our little tab at the top. And I'm gonna rename this to be our player tab, which is gonna be the first tab on my menu bar. Inside our Ninja Adventure asset pack, which we've been using, we can double click on the UI folder and then double click on dialogue. You can use whatever you like for this, but I'm going to be using the choice box PNG. So I'm just gonna drag this into our assets. And in the settings of this choice box, I'm gonna set the pixels per unit to be 20, filter mode to be point no filter, and compression to be none, and click apply. Now, if I click back on our player tab, I can drag choice box into the source image. And it's a bit squishy right now, so all you have to do is click set native size. I'm gonna hold down control and press D while selecting our players tab and duplicate this three times so we can have four icons at the top. You can do as many as you want in your game. But for me, I'm gonna have my inventory tab, my map tab, and my settings tab. Now, so we don't have to position these out ourselves, what we can do is click on tabs and go add component and add a grid layout group. Now you can see these are still all squished up together. So what we need to do is edit this tab shape to fit the size of our menu. So if we double click on menu, our scene will zoom out to show you your full UI. And we click on tabs, you can see it's just this little box right now which is why our groups are getting so squished together. So you can drag this box out and it should snap to the edge of your menu on both sides. And then click on the move tool, drag the green arrow and move it to the top of your menu. Now these are still a little squished together. So over in our grid layout group settings, you can mess around with these as much as you like to make it how you want. But what I like is cell size to be 400, add an X spacing of 20, and to get these centered, my child alignment, I set to middle center. Now we've got some nicely spaced out tabs. Cool, so I'm gonna collapse that for now. And now we can work on our pages. So we're again gonna want an image. So we'll right click on pages and go UI, image. And I'll call this player page. And for the background of this, in Ninja Adventure Asset Pack, I'm going to use the dialog box simple. Drag that into our assets. The pixels per unit on this one, I did to 60. Filter mode to be point no filter and compression to be none. Click apply, then back to player page, drag in dialog box to our source image. Now again, this is very squishy. So let's click on that rect tool and drag this to the edges of our menu. Cool, just line that up with the tabs. Very nice. We can now simply duplicate our player page down by holding control and then pressing D one, two, three times and matching what we had above. So I'll have my inventory page, map page, and settings page. Cool, I'll close that back down. So we're doing well, we're layering up our UI. Next, let's get the text onto our tabs. So if we open up our tabs again, I'm gonna right click on player tab and go UI text. 
and this will be Text Mesh Pro we're going to be working with. So if you're like me and you haven't used Text Mesh, Text Mesh Pro yet, you can import TMP by clicking the button here, waiting for these to import, and then you can close this down pressing the X. So right now our text is white, so let's make this black so we can see it. And our first tab is called Party. We can make this text a bit bigger, so I'm going to go to 42, and I'm going to center it. Now this font doesn't look very fun for a nice pixely game, so I'm quickly going to show you how to import any font you want into your game. Ninja Adventure comes with a font itself, so in the UI folder we have a folder for font. Here you can see some preview images and then the TTF file of normal font. You can drag this straight into your assets and you can't use this straight away, this normal font. It won't work if you drag it into that font asset. What you need to do is go Window, Text Mesh, Text Mesh Pro and then Font Asset Creator. In the source font file, you now drag in normal font into here. You can leave all the settings the same and just click Generate Font Atlas. This will load our font down the bottom and we can click save and I'll save this just in our side our assets here. Now you can see we've got this blue font file. This is the one we can drag into our text for our party. And there you go, you can see it's changed. This party looks a bit low so I'm going to change the alignment down here to be in the middle as well. But on the bottom actually looks more centered to me. So I'll put it on the bottom for now and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Cool, now really I should have done this first before duplicating these tabs. So I'm actually going to delete those and now duplicate the player tab. Uh, so hold down Control D and we'll get the text coming with it as well. So let me just rename these quickly. Sorry. Cool, so yeah, if you copied and pasted, these might mess up. It's easier to just duplicate your player tab and it'll follow all the settings along with it. So I want to name this one Inventory. Oh, I want it all in caps as well. You can see our inventory has gone over the line, so I'm just going to drag this out so it fits in the boundary. Map tab, rename to map, oops, capitals, and settings tab, I'll rename to settings. And that's too big too, so let me just drag that out. Drag it to the edges, set so centered, cool, cool, cool. Very nice. Cool, so now let's get some code going. So for our menu, of course, we don't want it always in front of our screen. We want to be able to open and close our menu at will. So on our UI canvas object, we're actually going to have our menu controller. So we can open and close our menu and the code will still run. So let's click add component, new script, and I'll call this menu controller. Double click on this to open it up. So at the top, all we're going to need is a public game object for our menu canvas. And in our start, we're going to want our menu not to be active. So it's not blocking the screen as soon as we play our game. So let's go menu canvas, set active to false. And then in update, I'm going to go if input.getKeyDown and here you can pick a key code that you want to be the button that activates your menu. So do you want it to be M? Do you want it to be I? I'm used to in games pressing tab to open my menu. So I'm actually going to type tab here and that will work for the tab key on your keyboard. So it's going to be press tab to open, press tab to close. And to do that, we'll go menu canvas dot set active. And we want it to be whatever our menu canvas currently isn't. So if it's open, we'll close it. If it's closed, we'll open it. So to do that, we'll go exclamation mark, which means not. So our not menu canvas dot active self. So what the menu canvas currently isn't, if that makes sense. Some backwards logic for you. And that's all we need here. If we go back to Unity on our UI canvas, you can see we've got our menu controller script with our menu canvas slot. We can drag that menu canvas over into the game object slot and we can test this out by pressing play. Then of course our game starts with the menu closed. If I press tab, the menu opens. I press it again, it closes. So cool, very nice. What we want now is to be able to click on these tabs and I'm going to want to gray out any that are not clicked on and move to the correct page that the tab relates to. Cool, so I'm going to use our tabs object to handle all this control. So let's add a component and go new script I'll call this our tab controller. Double click on this to open up. So at the top, we're going to want to go public image and do two square brackets. We'll need to import image and we're going to be using unity engine.ui and this will be for our tab images. We're going to be using these to gray them out and highlight the ones that we've selected. Then we're going to want another array, which will be a public game object array. So that's what the square brackets is that makes it an array and this is going to be for our pages so we can activate and deactivate the pages that we've clicked on based on our tabs so we're not going to need this update function so we can delete that but we will want a public void activate tab i'm going to use numbers to identify my tabs so the order that they go along from left to right one two three four 
So I'm going to go int tab no is going to pass into this activate tab and this activate tab we're going to call when we click on the image of our tab in the header. Cool. So first of all, what I'm going to do is use a for loop and I'm going to go around all our tab headers and pages and set them to deactivated. And then I'll just activate the one that we did click on. It's like the easy way of doing this. So I'll go int i equals zero while i is less than pages dot length, then i plus plus. So in here we'll go pages i dot set active to false so we can disable it. And then we'll also do our tab image square brackets i and set the color by going dot color to equal color dot gray. Oh, not green, gray. So this will gray out our tab. Next, we're going to want to set our pages based on the tab number passed in. So pages tab number dot set active to be true. So the one we've clicked on will be true. And the same for our tab images. Pass in the tab number, set the color to this time be color dot white, which will basically make it transparent and just be the color that it is. Now it's up to you how you want your menu to work. If you want to open the menu and it always be on the first page, what we can do here is activate tab and pass in zero since that's the first item in an R array always starts at zero, not one. If you want it to stay with whatever was last opened, you can just not call this, but I'm going to leave this in here. So it's always opens to our first page. So cool. If we go back to unity, I'm going to click on our tabs. And in the inspector, if you click on this padlock, it'll keep our tabs page here. Otherwise, if this was unticked and you try to grab one of these, it moves it from the inspector. So I'm going to click the padlock at the top so I can click on the player tab, hold down shift, click on the settings tab and it selects all of these. And I'm going to drag these tabs into our tab images array. You can see this sets it to four. And if we open it up, it's grabbed the image out of all of these objects. Now the same thing for our pages. I'm going to click on player page, hold down shift and click on settings page and then drag this into our pages array, which has grabbed all our objects for us. Now we're not done yet. So before you press play, like I'm doing, if I click on our other headers, it doesn't do anything. I've just noticed I have party written on here instead of player on our tab. So let's change that player, not party. Okay, so to turn our images into a button like thing. So when we click on it, it'll change to the next tab. We're going to go add component and search for event trigger. We'll then click add new event type and we're going to want pointer down. So when we click our pointer, which is our mouse down on this tab. So we'll click the plus button on our pointer down event. We'll drag our tabs object into this slot. And then on the no function drop down, click on this, go tab controller and select activate tab. We'll want to keep player tab at zero since arrays start at zero. So it's the first in the array and it's the first on our list. And then to make this easier on event trigger on the three dots on the side, you can click on this and click copy component. And if we click on our inventory tab, just on something like the image free dot here, you can go paste component is new and don't worry, your image is still safe. It just adds our event trigger. So player tab was zero. We're going to want this one to be one and we'll go to map tab, do the same thing and paste component is new. Set this to be two settings tab, paste component is new. Set this to be free. And just for testing, I'm going to change the colors of our pages so we can see that they are actually changing. So player page, I'll leave white inventory page. I'm going to set to be green map page will be red and settings page. I'll make blue. Cool. So if we press play, Let's press tab. Here's our player page, still white. Click on inventory and now it changes to green. You can see our inventory page in the side is being activated. Map all red and settings all blue. Very cool. In our next video, we're actually going to be populating our menu, one of the pages at least. And we're going to be starting off with our settings page where we're going to look into a simple save system so we can get our head around saving before we get, have too much data to try and store and it gets too big and complex. We're instead going to add in something simple. We're going to be saving our player position and loading that on game start. So when it comes to bigger stuff like inventories, we'll have the base down and you'll know what you're doing. So cool. Hopefully this all worked for you. If it didn't, you can grab this whole package on my Patreon or you can just support me there if you like the videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.